so today I'm going to talk about the barrier acoustic acceleration. The barrier acoustic acceleration will help the scientists understand the acceleration of the universe. And uh, first, my question is, do you guys know what is the bariums? Bariums is a, a group of family particles which consist of three quarks. And the most well-known bariums are the protons and neutrons, which consist most of the visible matter in our early universe. So for the sake of our study here, we just think the bariums are something like protons and neutrons. Uh, first, I want you guys to look at these four pictures. And uh, these are the early universe before, before the universe become transparent. What it means is like, as you can see, there's a red ring in the circle, and these are the protons and neutrons in the early universe. The universe consists of very hard and dense and fluid like plasma of, of electrons and baryons. The red ring are the, are the photons and baryons. And as you can see, there is a black spot in the center. They are considered to be the dark matter, which has a lot of mass. So during this time, we have two forces. The first force is the gravitational force, which is exerted by the dark matter in the center. They try to, they try to pull they try to pull these bariums to the center. Another force is the interaction between the, um, between the photons and electrons, and it's the pressure force that try to make these bariums moving outward. So the, these two counteracting forces makes the oscillating regions of compression and uh, rarefication. So later we will do some experiment to understand these sound waves, and we call it the cosmic sound. And uh, the, co the cosmic sound is similar to the sound wave in our normal life. So understanding the sound wave in our normal life will help us understand this cosmic sound. As I say, there are two forces during this time. The pressure force is larger than the gravitational force, though so the protons and the bariums they will keep moving outward, as you can see as the graph, the red circle become larger and larger. And the, on the, right, the graph on the right, the x-axis is the distance, the y-axis is the density. So during the, before the universe become transparent, and the, the bariums and protons, they moving together because this plasma is non-neutral, so the light cannot travel past the bariums. So as the universe is expanding, it gets cooler and cooler. So during the time, the universe will be cool enough. So right now, the, the protons can capture the, the electrons to form the neutral hydrogen. Once the neutral hydrogen is formed, the light can travel past these neutral hydrogens. All of us know there is a cosmic microwave background radiation. It's the light that emitted exactly during this time. So this is a time the universe become transparent. When we say the universe become transparent, we mean that right now the light, the photons, the photons can travel past the neutral hydrogens, can travel past the bariums. So the reason why we see the fluctuation in our, in our CMB map is because, as I say, the bariums is moving as a form of cosm as a form of sound waves. So there will be some place that's, that is being compressed. There will be some place that is rarefied. The place that is being compressed will have more mass and light. And uh, so that in our CMB map, they have a higher temperature. And that's just that's sort of another reason why we think there is a fluctuation in our CMB maps. As you can see, when the universe becomes transparent, there are two lines. The blue lines means the baryons, the red line means the photons. As, as I say, right now, the photons can travel past the baryons, so the baryons will lose the pressure, will lose the pressure to keep them moving outward. Instead, they will gradually stay, stay there, and the, the photons will keep moving and keep moving. As you can see, the red line is being farther and farther away. And so there is a term that scientists define, it's the sound horizon. They define this term as where the barium starts moving and where it stops. The sound horizon, it's, in, it's like the barium starts moving at here, it stops moving at here. So in this circle, they define this, the sound horizon. So what the scientists right now do is they are going to observe this, this area and they will compare it every day. So what they find out is that this area is become larger and larger and also at an exciting rate. This is another sort of another reason why 
the scientists think right now the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. So that's why understanding the battery acoustic isolation will help us understand the dark energy. So what's going, what's going on after the universe becomes transparent? Let's look at graph. As I, as I mentioned before, the red lines just keep moving outward and outward. But another weird thing is like, this red line seems is moving, this blue line seems moving backward. As you can see, lots of baryons are moving back to the center. The main reason because is like I say, these baryons at this red ring will lo lose the pressure that keeps them moving outward. So the gravitational force at the center will move in, will pull them back to the center. That's why, that's why you can see lots of baryons are being pulled back in our graph. So that's why we call it the baryon acoustic isolation. Let's get down to do some experiment to understand the properties of the sound wave that in our normal life. First, what I'm going to do is like, as we, we all have an intuition that when the singer is seeing a note like going higher and higher, like from do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, and the frequencies of the sound he, make, he makes might be higher and higher. So right now we can use the lab pro very near to and the microphone and the, the software to see whether that is the case. And uh, I have two tubes here. I will, I will pass one side of the tube and uh, you will hear two different voices. So do you think which sound, which sound, the, whose frequency is higher, it's the long tube or the short tube? So let's test it. And the, here we have the microphone here. So, so as you can see, there are probably about two peaks, but we don't consider about the harmonic, so we just consider about the the peak that with the largest amplitude. And let's examine the data we have. It's probably about the 500, that's the pitch we get. So let's try this one. And okay, this graph is perfect. So let's examine our data again. Yeah, low we get about something about 100. So, so can you explain why the long tube can only make about 100 fre frequency sound while this short tube can make about like 500, 500 frequency sound? So when, the main reason is that we have the equation, the wavelength times the frequency equals the velocity. And uh, here we don't consider about the harmonics. So usually the wavelength that is made during this pipe is equal to the length of the pipe. So it's like the longer the longer the tube, the short the longer the wavelength, and the, so the smaller the frequency. That's why the frequency made by this small by this shorter tube is higher than the frequency made by this longer tube. 